So a lot of people have been asking me to make a day in the life uh, video, day in the life of A.B. Ramos. I live a very interesting life. People tell me I'm very interesting. I really don't know if I am. I'm not sure if my personality just reflects it. But here I am stepping out of my comfort zone. Again, I already stepped out of my comfort zone in the previous video I uploaded, Why I Run. It is not going to get more uncomfortable than that, which is probably why I seem a bit more brave and bold right now. So, with that being said, I'll kind of give you guys an introduction and a rundown of what I do in a day. Right now, it is 7.10. I woke up at 6.30. I drank some coffee. And one thing I do every single day, which you guys already might know about, is I have like a personal mantra and some affirmations that I tell myself every single day. I don't really know if it actually helps, but it kind of just gives me a way to motivate myself and talk to myself and acknowledge that I am in charge of my destiny. A uh, current rephrasing of part of the mantra is, I swear to die with glory and I swear to die with honor. On top of the personal mantras, there's a couple other things I do right when I wake up. I believe that I we should be grateful to be alive and to live life every single day. And for me, life is precious. There's just so many heavenly, beautiful, lovely experiences that we have every single day that I think we can forget about or lose focus on because we live in very difficult and interesting times. So every single day, I thank the universe that I am alive and that I exist. The last part is, and this may sound grim, but I wake up every single day and I remind myself that I could die today. And no, I'm not depressed. No, I don't want to die or anything. But once you accept the fact that there is always the non-zero possibility that you may die, you learn to you learn to not squander, I guess, life in general. If I if for me, if I don't accept the fact that the next day isn't guaranteed, I could slack off. I could not. I could not work hard, I could not run, I could not uh, treat people properly, I could not study, I could not try hard enough in class. Just, you know, all those little things in life. So for me, I believe that if when I practice living life, accepting the fact that I may die, I will perform better and I will perform at all of my duties and my objectives as optimally as possible. I want to give a quick shout out to my very good friend, Ralph Brown. He's a friend and I don't really know if I have on pl or plan on having kids, but if I do have kids, it, I want my kid to be Ralph Brown because he is one cool dude. I There's a list of people I want to be when I grow up. Ralph Brown is one of them. This past Sunday, I kind of, or this past Saturday, I kind of went through a lot. There's a bit of a, if you know, you know. But I went through a lot, and basically, by the end of it, me and Ralph Brown had a bit of, like, a podcast moment where we talked about, like, certain things for, like, four hours straight. And essentially, I caved in and decided to do this little challenge where, for one week, I do not listen to music before, during, or immediately after a run. Listening to music is done sparingly, essentially, as minimal as possible. Limit social media usage to, like, I think it's 10 minutes per day. So Snapchat, Instagram, I deleted Twitter, so no Twitter. And, yeah, I think that's all pretty much I use anyway. Limit that to 10 minutes per day. And, uh, essentially... Uh, the goal is to, and just in general, not low, very low phone usage. And the goal is to basically give myself a dopamine detox. And so far, it has 
uh, I think it has some benefits. Excuse me. Because I went for a 20 miler on Sunday. And besides the fact it sucked for like the first five minutes, because I need that motivation to start running because it was like 20 degrees real feel and windy. I realized that I actually may perform well when it's just me and my thoughts and I can, I get the b best out of myself through myself and not uh, stimuli. And I've noticed my mood has been pretty stable and I get a lot less anxiety. And also I'm just more productive. Like I've been telling myself that I want to journal. And for once I actually am journaling and a lot of my life secrets are in this uh, composition book. So when you realize that a lot of us use our phone for like five hours a day, that's five hours that could be spent doing a lot more productive things and that'll give us a lot less anxiety. And overall, I'm seeing the benefits. My phone is always on do not, is almost always on do not disturb. My phone's on do not disturb right now. Honestly, this challenge, this day in the life video is kind of challenging because I have to go on my phone more than I'd like. I'm very nervous to show my life. It's kind of a distraction. I'm very uncomfortable. But I think this is one of those things that it'll help me grow. And Basically, I, I try to step out of my comfort zone in at least one way every single day, just because I think that it's important to hold ourselves accountable and to grow as people. You don't grow by keeping things the same. You got to keep changing things up. And I truly believe that if you set goals for yourself and are ambitious and you do things to make yourself better as a person, you truly will find out who you are and what you're made of. And I constantly want to improve myself and be the best possible version of myself as I can be. It's, it's 718 right now. I've been talking to the camera for eight minutes. Really proud of myself for that. I'm starting to get over my uh, anxiety and social anxiety and just general nervousness with talking. I'm very insecure about my voice. I'm rambling now, so I'll stop with that. But essentially, I plan on going for a run in about 40 minutes. I'll probably meditate for 20 minutes, like probably right when I get done recording. I'll go to my room, put my AirPods in with noise cancellation, just sit in silence and focus on breathing for 20 minutes. With that being said, I will update you all sometime later, talking about how the run went and giving you a bit more of a segue into what it's like having to go to class and all that fun stuff. See ya. And we are back. If it looks like I just showered, it is because I just showered and I'm currently on the way to uh, class. I'm not gonna lie, I took way too long in the shower. I don't have my phone on me, so I didn't set a timer. So I'm running just slightly behind. Breakdown of the run. I'll post the Strava screenshot probably when I edit. But basically, just did 10 miles easy. I think I was around like 7.10 pace average. I'm not sure if I'll run again later today. We had to do max uh, squat and deadlift for the past few days in uh, strength and conditioning. So my legs feel pretty dead. I'm not gonna lie, the rest of the day is going to be pretty wide open. I have uh, advanced speech class from 11 to 12.15. I'll have some downtime in between, and then I have a midterm exam, 2 to 3.15. I could not find my lucky testing shirt. I have a button-up shirt that has flamingos and stuff on it, and for some reason I can't find it, so I'm using like a substitute or a replacement in the meantime so if I don't do well in the exam that's why I am kind of nervous for the midterm but I think I got this for some reason I just am really good at uh, essays and it's gonna be an essay for the midterm I think that I for I guess for a while I wanted to be a lawyer I'm not really sure if I still do but the class is a uh, this thing called Civil Liberties and the Constitution. It's a political science class. I kind of just took it because I want to see what it's like to be in like a law class, and I'm not going to lie. It is not the funnest thing. 
Like, I haven't really found an enjoyable part about it, other than the fact that I got good grades in the class so far, and it makes me feel smart, but, you know, that's not a good enough reason, in my opinion, to want to pursue a career. you got to have something fulfilling that makes the soul happy, in my opinion. Train tracks. But, um, I'll hopefully get some more footage later. Actually, and one last thing. So I ate right when I got back from the run, so that was around 9.15, and I had uh, four boiled eggs and uh, two slices of toast with avocado on it. I am probably going to get hungry later, so I'll have a Gatorade protein bar, and I think that'll be it for now. I'm a little stressed out, so my brain's probably not working 100% right, but that's okay. I live a very uh, chaotic life, and I love it, and I would not trade it for anything. See you all later. And here we are again. I'm not gonna lie, I expected to record at some point on campus, but that kind of didn't happen because I had to walk around a little bit and kind of de-stress and get the nerves out for my midterm. The midterm went pretty decent. I'm kind of scared because one of the questions asked uh, about like a symbolic uh, free speech or something like that, or like expressive speech. And I chose a case that we haven't really gone over and cited it. So we'll see if that gets uh, if that gets counted. If not, I might have to have some beef with the professor. I'm hoping it's not the case. I feel like a huge weight is lifted off my shoulder. I feel like I'll be able to relax a lot more now. It is uh, 3.56. I am almost home and I'm feeling ambitious today. So I'm gonna go for another probably six mile run the question is still in the air of whether or not I'll film that or like record myself running. There we go. But uh, if not, I will debrief. I'll show you guys my running shoe rotation and probably talk a bit more about some stuff that I haven't mentioned yet. But we are straight chilling. This is my life, not super glamorous, but always, uh, always on the move. That's what I say when people ask me how I'm doing. I say I'm always on the move. I'm super excited. It's a little windy out, so I'll have some beef with the wind. Uh, I'll probably post about it on Strava too, we'll see. But until then, peace out, check in with you guys later. I'm not even gonna lie, this might as well be called like a day in Avery's car because I haven't really had much time to like get other good scenic spots. But basically, so I just got out of the sauna. I finished a run as well i did i always plan on doing six miles but i just felt good today because i originally wanted to do a workout tomorrow but i decided oh i feel fine so i can run the workout in the middle of the six mile run so i ended up do just doing uh like a two mile warm-up i hit like 640 something and like 618 for the two mile warm up, and then I ran I, like a 550 mile, and then I think the rest were 530s for the four mile uh, tempo portion, which I thought was fine for basically an improvised workout. I didn't quite feel like my legs had like the turnover in them. It's been a while since I've done strides, but I honestly can't really complain. Whenever the workout's improvised, it always kind of, uh, it's never really perfect. You obviously wish you could prep a bit more. I want to mention Ralph Brown again one more time because I'm about to go to Starbucks because I'm in the mood for like hot chocolate or like a sweet hot drink. No caffeine though because it's uh, 6.03 right now. So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to finish up my journaling for the past few days because I journal every, I start journaling every single day and I have a really hard time finishing the journal in the exact same day, but I'm going to get on top of it and I'm going to finish it up and write down all my feelings. And then I'll probably show you guys a shoe rotation later. I plan on, uh, I gotta find something fun to do for the rest of the night because there's still like at least like four plus more hours of the day left for me to uh, do stuff. I mentioned earlier, you gotta enjoy it, you have to cherish it and you have to live life to the fullest. And if that means do chaotic things as long as you're not actually hurting yourself or anybody i think you might as well go for it and i don't know my philosophy is that when you think about it life is just a bunch of mini side quests 
with maybe one or two main quests. And with that, I will see you guys all again later. And now we're back to the concluding portion of A Day in the Life of Avery. I'm not going to lie, this feels like a very horribly made video because I haven't shown much footage that is interesting. It's mostly just me talking to the camera, which I'm not sure if I'm photogenic or not. I don't know if my voice is a good voice, <clears throat> a good talking voice, and yeah, this is very uh, awkward and uncomfortable, and there's a reason that I'm nervous to make this video, which is why I need to do it. But I guess I want to introduce this last portion of, of A Day in the Life of Avery by saying that um, one thing I forgot to mention in the car earlier was how I've been doing like a dopamine detox, so no music during a run. And during the tempo portion of the second run I did this this afternoon or earlier, there was a there was a time it was around like five point uh seven five miles in, so about a quarter mile left to go where I got a bit of like gastrointestinal issues. And I was really thinking to myself, like, dang, I could stop right now. And I could be like, oh yeah, the run's done. I like, I'll like i just lie and say I ran the two mile warm up and then rested and went into the run. I could have done strides and said I did a full two mile warm up and four mile tempo. But in reality, I'm like 400 meters short. And one thing that I've been doing to myself now that I stopped listening to music is that I just talk to myself and tell myself like another personal mantra I'm doing this because I enjoy it and the effort and the struggle is the reward and rather than I think what helps me is because I struggle a lot mentally is that rather than try and block out uh the things in my head when things get hard I face them head on when I don't have music. When I have music, I can tune things out and just kind of, uh, I can let the music kind of give me that stimuli and that dopamine that makes me forget all the hard things that are going on. But when it's just me, I've got to fight those demons head on. And I, honestly, I think it may be working because I've been telling myself the same thing every single run. Even the tempo run where it's a bit harder to talk, you know, out loud. I was telling myself out loud, like, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. You know, you're doing this because you enjoy it. You know, are you really going to run a fast 10K if you're giving up on a four mile tempo? And I'm definitely, I think, I hopefully am unlocking the key to getting my mentality back. I've been struggling so much. This winter training cycle, this in indoor track season, was definitely one to forget. You know, I really didn't, there's nothing really fun, frankly, that came out of it. You know, I say I'm doing this because I enjoy it, but right now, or not right now, I wasn't enjoying any part of the tra indoor track season, and it's it just got to me mentally. But now, I'm slowly on the, on the rebounds. And also, yes, I do. I did remember to get my shoes out here so you can see what shoes I wear. In the in the real world, I am single, but in the running world, I am in an open relationship with Hoka and Nike. Today, on like workout days, I'm very superstitious, so I will wear all Nike. So I wore a black Nike Purdue Northwest shirt black Nike uh, shorts, black Nike socks, and I wore the Nike Invincible Run 2 for all of the workout. And that's what really excites me is because once I start wearing my actual workout shoes, the Nike Vaporflies, I'll be able to run even faster because my legs felt really flat today and <clears throat> I could just tell that the, just the plain old thick Nike uh, Zoom X foam wasn't, wasn't cutting it. It would have been really nice to have a carbon plate, but now I feel like uh, 
one of my teammates who she never wears carbon fiber plated shoes and she never wears super shoes and she is still very fast. I'm not going to name drop her because I don't know if she wants me to. My running relationship is open because I think I'm cheating on Nike. I think I'm cheating on her with Hoka because I also have the Hoka Bondi 8. There's just something special and nostalgic about Hoka because I wore it in high school and I'm just not, I can't let her go. She's the ex-girlfriend that I can't forget about, you know? And I also have the Hoka Bondi X, which is another nostalgic shoe because this is also, this model came out at least like, I think a year or two, three years ago. So a good amount of time, a good amount of time ago. I remember wearing these shoes for my long runs in senior year of high school. So that would have been 2021 and 2022 and they might have been released before then and I do wear these shoes for long runs although it did cause some chafing in my left like Achilles tendon area a couple days ago which was really not fun I think there's a good there's a way to fix it because I tried it last time before so but I've been too lazy to do that um now's a good time to mention uh my journaling so earlier today, after I got out of the sauna, I was around 610 when I, my Starbucks order came in and I was able to sit down, put my phone on do not disturb and uh, get into some deep uh, thoughts and some deep work into uh, the composition book that I journal in. And I think there is nothing uh, more therapeutic than writing down because I break down my entire day into a journal so it's just about three or four pages full pages of my thoughts very intimate thoughts very deep thoughts if you think I talk weird I literally talk or I literally write the exact way that I talk so I'll write I'm gonna be real with myself for a second or I'm gonna admit something I don't want to admit and I write it down I, I would show you guys, but it's way too private. And there's, I'm not sure, because I'm just doing a lot better mentally overall. I don't know if it's the, the dopamine detox. You know, I'm not scrolling through Instagram endlessly anymore or TikTok. I'm not stressed about Snapchat. I'm not endlessly stalking people's Snapchat stories. You know, I'm not scrolling through Facebook and seeing old people argue with each other over politics and all that stressful stuff you know with music i'm controlling my stimuli it's 9 15 right now so it would be an appropriate time now to watch a movie or actually sit down and enjoy music you know i worked hard all day i think i worked hard all day and i kind of earned like my 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 fun time or my dopamine if I had a girlfriend, right now it would be girlfriend time. But like I say, there are times where absolute chaos will emerge. It could have emerged at like 3.15 when I finished my midterm exam. It didn't. I was feeling ambitious, went for a run. Uh, I'm not really sure how I feel about it, but like I said, I'm trying to be brave and put myself out there and become a interesting person because there's a lot of people that are scared to admit certain things about themselves and I want to I want to encourage them and I want to give them hope uh, that someone who's awkward like me can do something and admit it anyone can that kind of brings me into the conclusion of today's uh, day in the life so today was kind of like an average day you can, uh, you know, you can do anything in your life. If you eventually there will be a YouTube video, me talking about my entire running uh, journey and my entire running story. And just something that I want to always remind people is that I put myself out there and I talk a lot and I encourage people because there's a lot of people that tell me I'm like, a bit of a hero or I'm an inspiration and the reality is is that I am no different from anyone else 
in my opinion, I'm pretty much just an average runner. Yeah, I run 100 miles a week, but I could probably, you know, 1530, 1545K. In my opinion, that's just average, especially at a D2 school. The school that I go to is Division Two. But the story and the journey of how I got here is is a very long one. It's full of lots of heartbreak, full of lots of failure. And I think that people, a lot of us experience failure in both life and specifically in running. You know, I remember there's a, they're not a teammate, a friend I have who I gave him a whole talk about, you know, you've been running for four years. You've ran thousands of miles and you've ran several races. You've had some of the best times of your life and the best and the worst times of your life. But I truly believe that you're closer to your best day than your worst day. And you can't let one race define all of that hard work and all that dedication, all the sacrifices and all the early mornings. No one can ever take that away from you. And most importantly, you shouldn't take it away from you. I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm just an average guy who wants to give you all hope because I believe that my life's calling is to give hope to those who have none. I don't really know what I want to do when I grow up as a job or anything, but I just do know that whatever I do, I want to make a positive experience in people's lives and I want to be the positive change. You know, I, just, I the whole reason I do, I posted my last video is because I want to make a positive change. The reason I'm posting this video is I want you guys to realize that I'm not some sort of, uh, I'm not invincible. I'm not some sort of crazy Olympic athlete. I'm just an average person that likes to have fun. Around uh, this time, obviously I have a little bit of fun that I'm going to have, but I also will just think to myself a little bit like, wow, this life thing is beautiful. And I also give myself affirmations again. I live the whole day. Tomorrow's, tomorrow's not guaranteed. I treated everyone that I spoke to uh, in the way that I want to. They're in a way that I wanted to. And if I die, I will die proud. And I will die with glory and honor. I didn't start a revolution, but I, if I have to leave Earth, I'll leave proud. And I hope that you all can say that as well. Good night, everyone.